the fighting game community returns to its offline roots in the midst of the Amarion variant, the birth of a new option select threatens everything that the community holds dear. Find out how tonight on 60 Frames. My name is Majin Obama, and this is a 60 Frames special investigative report. The times, they are a-changing. For as long as mankind has challenged himself, challenged others, and challenged the stars, the option select has also existed. Used as a means to provide relief of an excuse in the event of a negative outcome, while being able to boost the win in the event of a positive outcome, or to add to the sting of defeat to their opponents in the event of competition, option selects have been around since the beginning of time. Defensively, they've been used to cope, to dodge personal accountability, or just to protect your ego. For fighting games especially, this has been the case. However, on October 2nd, 2021, the meta completely changed. But before we take a look at the new, let's take a look at the history and evolution of the option select and its use in contemporary settings. After all, this concept is as old as competition itself. There are records that date back to ancient Roman times during the end of Empress Romola's reign where warriors would fall in combat and tell their opponents, see me in the Colosseum. Archaeologists have even discovered messages sent between gladiators that said, I don't even race chariots, bro. This is, of course, an option select that would naturally evolve into the modern classic, I don't even play this game. Of course, with the modern developments of sports, uh, see me in bracket has been used of course, to imply the result on game day would be different than a casual match. With the shift in platforms that came in the early 2000s, we then saw see me on console and see me on arcade. Uh, evolution console? It's my, this is my worst nightmare, dude. With the advent of online play in the early 2000s, this option select became a common one for titles that use lackluster net play systems. For example, take this Xbox Live message sent by now top player, Hook Gang God. I had a chance to speak with Shoyu Badusi 420 who played with him on Netplay. So what did you say to him to receive such a vile message? I told him that he just should stick to things that he's good at, like stream Mario Party by himself, getting drunk off that label, and that he'll never see me offline. Indecent? Certainly. And that's on gang. But it wouldn't be long before a strategy from long, long ago would rear its ugly head once again. This was a development in the meta initially brought to prominence by one player in the great ST Wars of 2005. For that year's Evolution event, it was decided that they would play ST on the PlayStation 1 version of the game, which, unfortunately for a lot of enthusiasts or arcade-based players, was an awkward transition to play on in a tournament setting. To the butthurt OGs and detractors who would downplay his performance, question his relevance, or blame the port, this guy thought he was hot shit because he beat me and Choi in a game that was like fucking Neo Geo conversion of Street Fighter or some crap, dude. <laughs> the highest ranked American ST player and legendary carrot stroker DSP would say, see me on PS1 ST. This classic play, of course, made a comeback in 2021, where renowned champion of a 16-man persona tournament held in Thailand, Giuna, stood his ground against girls bar peach enthusiast Joshua. Having suffered a humiliating defeat in bracket on the PlayStation 4 version of Strive during ICFC, he was then baited by multiple instigators into a rematch on the PC version of the game where he once again suffered the sting of defeat. Undeterred, he then challenged Giuna to a run back on PlayStation 5, a version of the game which has more input delay and thus opponents would be more susceptible to his whack, zero effort, built-in mix-ups. A natural evolution of the metal trailblazers like DSP started, Joshua said to his rivals, see me on PS5. So what is it about that version of the game that makes it your preferred version to play on? You just gotta understand, I just really like fat asses. Fast forward a month later, and the ceiling was raised once again. As more and more data on refresh rates on monitors, port differences between console versions and PC versions of several modern fighting games sparked debate within the community. Will tournament organizers realistically ever be able to consistently provide setups that give players of modern fighting games the optimal competitive environment? Or will what they have to play with at offline stages always pale in comparison to the high quality monitors and settings that they can create at home? Now, regardless of your stance on the matter, there is one thing we can all agree on. And that's for certain titles, this produced a new bizarre option select. See me online. 
I spoke with an expert who wishes to remain anonymous about the impact that this data and that these revelations had on the community at large. So when you saw the data and you saw the hard numbers behind all of this, what were your initial thoughts? What was your initial reaction? Yo, esports is a blowout. This brings us to where we stand now. On October 2nd, 2021, fighting games will be changed forever. A new option select was born, a daywalker, if you will. All the strengths of its predecessors, but none of the weaknesses. Tokyo Game Show 2021. As one of the longest running games media events in the world, there's always anticipation to see what JP devs have to show off or what events there are to showcase. Several years ago, there was an agreement to hold a series of Saudi Arabia versus Japan exhibitions across several popular titles, such as Street Fighter V, King of Fighters, Gran Turismo, and of course, Tekken 7. However, for various reasons, including but not limited to the global pandemic, this exhibition series was postponed until 2021. It was decided that Saudi Arabian players would travel to Japan to play. In the case of Tekken, three players would make the journey and play against the Japanese team live on stage. I spoke with Saudi Arabian qualifier Tora about the process and how this event came to be. So how did you come to participate in this event? What was the starting point for all of this? Okay, it first started uh, the Saudi commission announcing a tournament uh, here in Saudi Arabia where everyone can participate with the reward of traveling to Japan for the first place only. And uh, along all the Saudis players from all different areas, even Sora, MD Luffy, Federer, if you know him, all the famous players came to, the, the, to this tournament. The pool was like 120 player. And I got the third position in this tournament uh, along with my friend MD Luffy and Wasfi. So how did it feel when it was confirmed that you would be going to Japan? I was so happy. I was so I was jumping literally because I didn't believe it at all at the beginning. I didn't believe it at all. They told me you're gonna go. Just pack your pack. Uh, give us the information we can so we can do the uh, visa for you. And that was amazing. I was so happy. I was the idea of going to Japan itself. I never went to Japan previously, so the the country itself is fascinating too. There's just one catch. There's a travel ban on travelers to Japan, but no problem. Jesu will handle everything and make sure players are treated as exceptions. The schedule is very tight, though, with the event happening on the conclusion of the player's mandated quarantine period, with no time to spare. However, the plans of mice and men and esports often go awry. So what happened on the way there? I mean, why, when it came time for the event, why were two of your teammates not present at, at the venue? What happened? They told us to take a COVID swap before going on prod in the plane. So we took the COVID swab and I took it through the nasal, nasopharyngeal. And my colleagues and MD Luffy and Wasfi took it through the mouth. Apparently in Japan, it's not accepted to be taken through the mouth and we weren't informed about this at all. So I went to the airplane first alone. Then MD Luffy and Wasfi went the next flight, the next day. Knowing at the time of the event, that this tournament gonna run online, it was a shock to us. It really was a shock to us. With Tora as the sole member of the Saudi team that could compete in person, it would be on his shoulders to carry the team, or so it would seem. So since you were the only one who could go to the venue, it was, you naturally kind of presumed that you would be the only one who was going to compete, right? Yes, yes. I until the very moment I'm on the stage, they're giving us instruction to what to say and when to grab the microphone and when to set and when to do that. They told me to enter uh, online lobby. I was like, what? Why would I? I want to press offline to play versus battle. And they told me, no, this is a room and we created a room with you and double test the online. I was like, what? Why would I test the online? It's, I'm, I'm literally sitting next to him. Then I told them, is this related to my friends, MD Luffy and Wasfi, not being able to be here? They told you, no, even if they, weren't he if they were here, they would have played it online, which is the new rules of the new uh, e-gaming sports uh, mechanic that you're doing recently. And even the, our Japanese players, they didn't like it at all. 
I remember Hakai was complaining. I remember even Double made me play with him a lot. I didn't play with my main character, but he wanted to check the online itself. And he was said it's poor, really. The connection was poor. How did you feel after the event? I wasn't satisfied at all because I believe we could have done much better if the circumstances were better. And it's tough because the time itself uh, change and you, you just have the jet lag. And then suddenly they tell you you're going to play online. I'm not going to travel all the way to Japan to play online. It was I'm, I'm not satisfied. I wasn't satisfied at all. What do you think about playing online, offline? Well, it's the worst idea ever invented. It's offline, you play offline. If it's online, you play online. You just don't combine these stuff at all. And with that, fighting game events were forever changed. A new platform for competition, but also a new OS and one that will change the meta for years to come. For those of you that want to challenge Tora, well, he just has one thing to tell you. See me online, offline. That does it here for us at 60 Frames. As we continue celebrating Black History Month, tune into our coverage next week where we go over color commentary featuring Sejam. Y'all. As for this old boomer, well, I'll catch you offline.